Hello and welcome to my little baby computer. This is a little baby. I, we'll go over what that, that's all about probably in a different video. Um, <laughs> I had just started my Dwarf Fortress series and it occurred to me there's a lot of setup that kind of goes into it because you know, how to install it, how to run it, how to get your tools going and, and so on. So I figured I'll make a kind of bonus video. Uh, hey, let's put this together and, and see how it works. So here we have a fairly fresh Windows 7 installation. Um, it is pretty fresh out of the box. I installed it, I ran updates, uh, I ran updates, and we're here. So that's that's it. That's what we've got on here is just the default updates. Although I deliberately chose not to grab the Windows 10 ones because it, it's not where I want to go with this particular computer. <laughs> um, So what we're going to do is download Door Fortress. I didn't even download any other browsers, right? I barely have internet access on this thing. Um, I've got some important bookmarks up here. We'll be using each and every single one of those. So first, to download it, we're going to bay12games.com slash dwarves. Links, all of these links will be in the description. And the latest version is always going to be right here. You usually want, if you're doing Windows, if you're doing Linux, if you got a Mac, if you want Windows without the music. The legacy version is a different build. I'm not totally up to date on exactly how they're different. It, it has to do with how their programming kind of handles the display and stuff like that. Um, latest is 43.04 from June 20th. I'm actually going to get one before that because 43.04 doesn't play nice with a different tool we'll get to in a moment. So let's go with some older versions, and let's get the SDL Windows version of 43.03, May 22. So we'll download that one. Let's just save it and let it go into our Downloads folder. So the first part, how do we install and run Dwarf Fortress? Well, let's go open the folder. We have the zip file. So we'll extract that guy, and I'm just going to put it on my desktop. I'm not actually going to play from this computer. I'm not really going to do much with it. I'm just going to put it in, call it good, and then move on. Right? So, extract. Let's go ahead and run. Da -da 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 ding. I said da ding. There we are. And it is extracted. So, let's minimize this guy. Let's minimize that guy. Right there. Store Fortress. So, there's the executable. Uh, I was thinking about doing a shortcut. It's really not that critical. Here's a useful tip for those of you who are using Windows, at least 7 and later, possibly earlier versions as well. I'm going to right click and drag, and I can create a shortcut. So now I've got a shortcut to Door Fortress that just sits right here on my desktop. And that's, that's super handy, because if you single click and drag, it will move it. And I don't want to move it, I want it to stay right there right click and drag and we get that option to copy or move or create shortcuts. So let's run it. We don't know where it came from. All we know is that it runs. Are you sure you want to do this? It seems annoying. I've seen enough infections and viruses just happen that I'm comforted by seeing that pop up. But I know where this came from. I know what it is so we don't need to ask. Just go ahead and run it. Oh, and it works. Okay, so the thing is, I, I actually wanted it not to work. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's an error that will pop up sometimes, and I was really hoping to show that, that says um, MSCP, no, MS VCP 140.dll missing or something. And and that doesn't really work out very well. And so you have the error, and you're like, what do I do with that? The thing I wanna show, wanted to show there is that if that does happen, if you do get that msvcp140.dll error, it means you need to install Visual C++. And so I'll be putting a link to this as well. Right, well, once that opens. 
if it opens. Good and open. There we go. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. We're we'll putting a link to this as well. You want to download. Um, you actually want, from what I've seen testing this, the version that corresponds to the Dwarf Fortress that you're running. In this case, we're running 32-bit Dwarf Fortress, so we need Redis x86. I th you know what I bet it is? I bet 4303 didn't need this, and 4304 does. I bet that's what it is. At any rate, you want the, the bit depth for the one that you're running, not for your Windows. Probably won't hurt to have both. Hi, cat. Got a different cat. She's saying things. So if you do need that, then you download this and run it. It's from Microsoft proper. We'll, you'll have the link. You've got the secure link so you know that this is from actual Microsoft, assuming they didn't squelch on their SSL cert renewal and somebody swept it up in the meantime or something. That's, that didn't happen. That doesn't happen. Not to really big companies. I mean, I'm sure it does. Probably not that often, which is comforting. At any rate, it's from Microsoft so that it goes with Windows. This is the tool that you want. It's a bunch of libraries that will help. Moving on, the reason we got the older version, 4303 versus 4304, is because we want to use Dwarf Therapist. I'm putting a link there as well. And Dwarf Therapist does all kinds of super useful stuff, so let's just download that. I said download. Oh, there it is. Let's download this guy. And this is the compiled executable for Windows. This thing. I think it will run under Wine if you're on Linux. I'm not sure if there's a Dwarf Therapist for Mac. Let's go ahead and just save that. Let it sit in our Downloads folder. Do we have? Yeah, we totally do. Okay. Let's go into Downloads. Now we have Dwarf Therapist, which you kind of want to do the same thing. Extract all. I'll just put that also on the desktop. Personally, I recommend that you... I don't need to show because we'll, it'll be fine. Extract. Done. I like to put them all into a single Dwarf Fortress folder. And then one for each of the versions or different save files or whatever. Uh, pretty much anywhere on your computer, this can go ahead and live, and you just run it, and what it does is read the memory and check for a running copy of Dwarf Fortress. Obviously there isn't one running right now, so we're not going to get much. We'll get into what to do in here in an actual gameplay video, but Dwarf Therapist, pretty important, so we're using the older version. Now, the thing to note is that this version of Dwarf Therapist doesn't actually work with 4303. It works with 4203 and 4206, I think, but not actually 43. The trick to that is it needs a new mapping to get the... Uh, it needs a new memory mapping so that it knows how to read the memory properly. So in their GitHub, the Splintermind GitHub is the Dwarf Therapist memory layouts. And what I want to do is go into. So you find the 4303, as it says in the instructions, and it's pretty, pretty clear. Save target as. And then what we're going to do is instead of going to the downloads, it's desktop. Let's find Dwarf Fort. Oh, not Dwarf Fortress. My bad. Dwarf Therapist. Share. Memory layouts. Windows. Here's for the different versions that this different versions of Dwarf Fortress that that version of Dwarf Therapist will read. So version 43.03 graphics. Save that. Now that it's saved, Dwarf Therapist can now read the version of Dwarf Fortress that we have running. And I guess I need, I would like to show an example of that, but eh, there's a whole bunch of extra setup I forgot to do. So, <laughs> I think we have everything. Yeah, Visual C if you need it. The memory layouts if you're going to use Dwarf Therapist. And then the other thing is the Dwarf Fortress Wiki, which I will also put a link to because this 
is where you get all of the information on how to play the game, what different blocks do, what different things mean, how people are doing, so on and so forth. Lots of guides. There's a tutorial for how to create your very first fortress. There is tutorials for other things. There's how to download and install, how to run all these things. The utilities menu is where you can download Dwarf Therapist, but it also has a bunch of other useful things. For example, Lazy Noob Pack, which is a launcher and a software bundle, and it comes with Dwarf Fortress and all of and some tile sets and some tools and a bunch of other things that you might need or want, and you just run a single launcher and then everything is kind of built together. There's one for Mac, one for Linux. So that's pretty great, right? If that's what you're into. And that uh, that really helps if you're not sure and you don't really want to go messing with these INI files and whatnot. So that's a pretty useful option. Um, and if you just have no idea what a thing is, like what even do I do with diorite when I get some? Uh, we'll just search it up and here's the latest version. And oh man, look there we go. Diorite is a stone, and it doesn't create cluster and veins, but you just get like uniform layer. That's what it looks like when it's wall, when it's something, when it's something else. It's diorite, right? This is what it does. And there's the raws for it if you want to mod your game. It's just tons and tons of useful tools. Is there a random page? Yeah, useful pages on all kinds of stuff. A frill shark in version 31.25. It looks like the latest version we have on Article 4 is 4206, which is fine. It's a it's a kind of eel, I think. So you know, do the thing. Whatever. Now how to how to play the game if you just don't know what you're doing, which I spend a lot of time in here because I have no idea what most of these things do. Military? I don't know anything about the military in this game. We'll get there. We'll probably lose a fortress or two. It'll be fun. So that's uh, my intro on how to get all the tools you need, how to download Dwarf Fortress, where to go for help, how to get Dwarf Therapist running. And it doesn't matter where any of these are on your system, as long as they're all kind of together, right? All of this should be in a single folder, Dwarf Fortress folder. Dwarf Therapist should all live in its own folder, but it can be wherever. It can be in your Dwarf Fortress folder, whatever. Just want everything to be kind of in the right place. And uh, then you run it, and, you know, beyond quality. So there we are. Dwarf Fortress, and it runs and it plays. There's going to be no saves in here, so I'm not going to bother with, like, creating any any worlds or anything because as we know that takes like half an hour 40 minutes no thanks cool so yeah Dwarf Fortress alright um, questions comments there's the field below you know how to use it. the link should be in the description and happy fortressing <laughs>